By the end of this training, you will be able to understand how to build a virtual disk pool with different storage tiers using Amazon EBS and Windows Storage Spaces. See how to connect to storage spaces from another instance in Amazon EC2 via iSCSI. After this brief video, please take the hands-on lab at https colon slash slash run dot quicklabs dot com. Hi, Jen. Can you guide me on the best way to optimize storage in my Windows Server instances on AWS? Hi, John. Sure, are you looking for performance, cost, or reliability optimization? Well, all. Okay, so let's start with two fundamentals performance and reliability. First, with Amazon EBS volumes, you can buy disk performance in terms of IOPS. Second, since your virtual disks are already running on top of a highly redundant storage hardware pool, you ordinarily wouldn't need another layer of disk redundancy for simple and non-mission critical applications. But the level of redundancy depends on the type of data you're hosting and its importance to your organization. In some cases, you could do well by deploying another layer of redundancy. And if you're running the majority of your infrastructure on Windows Server, it's advisable to consider Windows Storage Spaces for these optimizations, instead of simple RAID levels. Okay, so what can we achieve by using Windows Storage Spaces on AWS? Actually, you can achieve a mix of performance, cost, and reliability benefits with Windows Storage Spaces on AWS. As we know, AWS provides three types of disks, General Purpose, SSD, Provisioned IOPS, SSD, and Magnetic. It's useful for large deployments to use a mix of all types of disks to optimize the cost and further create tiered virtual disks to attain performance similar to Provisioned IOPS SSD. This can be done easily with Windows Storage Spaces, where you can create a single virtual disk pool. This uses some SSDs and some magnetic disks and automatically prioritizes the reads and writes of the most frequently used files to the SSDs. It also helps pushing less frequently used files to the magnetic disk. You can also go on and create parity or dual parity pools to attain a much greater reliability for your data and still keep the cost in check just by distributing the storage among all the available types of disks on AWS. Okay, but do you think this could become too complex to administer? Not at all. It's much simpler to use Windows Storage Spaces on AWS than in a physical deployment. This is because here you don't have to manage the hardware yourself, which can be tedious and time-consuming. You can expand and contract your disk pool in minutes, not weeks. And you can automate the hardware changes by using AWS tools for Windows PowerShell. So, for example, you can use Microsoft System Center Operations Manager to monitor disk failures in your Windows storage spaces and trigger the replacement of the disk through AWS commands in Windows PowerShell. This can add a new disk to the pool instantly and data is replicated back to it through another Windows PowerShell script. How's that for a sophisticated self-healing data center? It sure sounds great, Jen. Thanks a lot. I'm going to set up Windows storage spaces in my AWS deployment. The hands-on lab on using Windows Server storage spaces with Amazon EBS will enable you to set up a Windows Server 2012 R2 Amazon EC2 instance. Add provisioned IOPS, SSD, and magnetic disk types. Build a tiered storage pool with SSD and magnetic disks. Create a virtual disk using the storage pool with storage tier. Connect to the disk from a client computer, another Amazon EC2 instance, using iSCSI. Mount and perform a basic IOPS test operation on the volume. Please complete the hands-on lab for this video at https colon slash slash run dot quicklabs dot com 